Good evening, beloved. Finally, we get to meet again. Finally, I get to record again. It's been quite an interesting season of uh, busyness, uh, of traveling, of uh, many other responsibilities in between. But here I am today and um, ready to share more nuggets. If you haven't watched part one, please go back to the video part one, which is uh, Sangoma testifies about an encounter with Christ. Um, so this is part three of, of that whole segment. Uh, please go back to that original story. It will provide the context for what I'm going to discuss, um, at this very moment. Okay. Uh, the anchoring scriptures for today that I felt led to, to use is Matthew 12 verse 43 to 45, John 5 verse 1 to 15. And then John 8 um, uh, from verse 10. And um, there are many other scriptures that I will refer to. But, res res um, but the main topic for today is how to be delivered from ancestral um, spirits and remain free. Uh, this is a very important topic because I've had so many inquiries from... Um, from from a lot of people where they they wanted to find out how to be delivered and how to to remain delivered and what my journey looked like um and let me tell you what god has given you authority to be delivered to remain delivered and i will share with you the steps that will help you to be delivered and set free and remain delivered uh, I have been delivered for seven years and yes, the enemy has tried his luck with me as he, he usually does with a lot of people, whether you're battling alcoholism or you're battling a spirit of lust or whatever your battles are, the enemy knows your weak areas and of course he will try his luck. Uh, but you know, when you are in Christ Jesus, uh, you are a new creation. All things have passed away and new things he has declared for you and for your life. And, um, and, and just before I go into that, I would love to, um, read the scriptures, Matthew 12, 43 to 45. It says when an unclean spirit comes out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and finds none then he says i will return into my house from where i had come from and when he comes he finds that the house is empty that the house is swept clean the person has repented the person is living for jesus then he goes and takes uh, with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell inside of the man. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. And it goes on to say, even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Okay. When we don't repent, when we don't live for Jesus, or we come into the church and we half in the church and half in the world, what ends up happening is that those very demons that we had overcome, end up recruiting other demons to come and dwell inside of our house when we do not live in a state where our house is in a state where we are repenting continuously before God and confessing our sins to the Father. And when we don't live in that space of, of consecration and repentance as those who are in Christ Jesus, we start to open up doors where more other demons can come into our lives and our situation ends up worse than it was beforehand. So I'm going to go into details about this further, but another anchoring scriptures, a scripture that I'd love for us to focus on today is John eight, where the woman was, uh, the, the woman in adultery was found. Um, she was found being immoral with a man and they tried to stone her and Jesus Christ uh, said to 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 the man uh, let he who is without sin be the one to cut to cast the first stone and then none of them of course could cast the stone and Jesus said to the woman uh, woman where are thine accusers and 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 and, and Jesus says, oh, so they haven't condemned you. And Jesus says to her, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. 
uh, in John, in John five, uh, verse one to fifteen, we see Jesus Christ encounter the man by the pool at pool in Bethesda, the man who is lame who couldn't walk, and he heals him. He asks him to pick up his mat, and he says to him, "Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you." So please look into uh, maybe this week, um, if you do get the time, please look into this Matthew twelve. Uh, verse 43 to 45 john 5 1 to 15 john 8 um from verse 10 and um another scripture is resist the devil and he will flee and then another scripture is that if a man be in christ he is a new creature all things have passed away and god makes all things new okay so let me get back to my story on how I was delivered and what the Lord taught me on what deliverance looks like, uh, what grace is and what grace isn't <laughs> because there is so much misinformation on grace. Um, and I find it interesting that there is a, a, the true grace of God as a biblical grace. And there's a counterfeit grace that is coming in 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 many of our churches that is creeping in in many of our churches that that says that jesus christ loves you he accepts you as you are and which is the truth but then doesn't go on to speak on repentance on living for jesus on being a new creature and there's almost even a debate and an argument that living for jesus is works <laughs> you know it's works of the law it's not grace i'm not gonna get into too much details with this but um but just to anchor this uh, it's important for us to recognize the difference between um works of trying to be saved which is impossible you know none of us can be saved by our own efforts it's literally through grace that we are saved it's through the sacrifice of jesus even i mean all the people in the bible from david solomon all even men that were seemingly righteous like david still fell short so we are not saved by our own efforts we are not saved by our own acts of holiness so um we do not consecrate the outside um and, and focus on outside external holiness uh, so that God approves of us so that we are saved. We are not saved by our own works but we are saved through grace and grace alone through the blood of Jesus Christ. However, when you are saved, <laughs> there's fruit of righteousness because you are saved, you are already saved. Salvation you can never earn it. You know, it's freely given. Christ gives it to us. But because you are saved, there are fruits of righteousness that we go on to bear, which means there needs to be a difference between a Christian and someone in the world. So with a new believer, a new believer still has, hasn't learned some things and, um, and, and they are bound to make many mistakes along the way. And God expects it, you know, because you are like a baby that is still crawling, that still needs to learn to walk properly. And, um, and, and, and we all fall short. We all have areas where we are weak. But that being said, grace is not a license to sin. Grace is not an excuse that we use to say, okay, thank you, Jesus Christ. It's not an insurance policy where it says, okay, it doesn't matter what I do then. I can just go and live anyhow because now I've received Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter what I do because when we sin and we continuously living in a sinful lifestyle, what we end up doing is we end up uh, opening demonic gates. Uh, we are the same as a person who goes to bed and sleeps at night and without locking their doors. And of course, we all know that <laughs> living in South Africa, that you can't do that. That when you go to bed without locking, locking your doors, it's only a matter of time until you find a thief inside your house or campers inside your house and our spiritual house work exactly the same and i love the ways in which we we um that when we live for jesus christ and we give our life and surrender to him even with our own imperfections is that 
is that he the holy spirit helps us you know to show us um to lead us to a life to be more like him um and 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 the life of a believer is not a an easy life it's a life that has us challenges because we we are called to crucify our flesh and nail it on the cross and to take up our cross and follow jesus christ and live for him and let me tell you what the flesh is always at war with the spirit with the things of the spirit and the battle is real and we get that and it just means that every time when you fall just confess to the father that father i've fallen i feel like i've fallen and um forgive me and please restore me and let me tell you what god forgives you immediately but there's something he just wants us to confess you know to 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 keep being in a space where we are consecrated where our hearts reflect his heart because to be honest when a person becomes born again it literally means they have died to their old self their old sinful life and they are now living for jesus salvation does not mean that now you marry your old life with the new life and this is how a lot of us become demonically afflicted when we don't repent when we think that there's a halfway to salvation to salvation when you say to yourself i'm going to do this thing but i'm not going to do it fully i'm just going to give god 70 percent but the other 30 percent this this little thing that I, this little sinful life uh, this little thing that I just can't let go of that very thing that you that that you that you cleave to ends up becoming the open gate that allows a demonic invasion which if you don't repent for a long time and you keep doing the same thing um, your your state as a compromised believer might even be worse than someone who never swept their house to begin with because now you have to deal with not just only that spirit that had left you that demon that had left your house now you have to deal with the seven other demons that it has recruited to come inside your house and let me tell you what the enemy has no right to afflict any person is is being is he has no authority to afflict a believer that is living in christ uh, however the only time that the enemy has the power to afflict us is when we've opened doors in the background that we weren't aware were actually doors and gates where he's able to come in and able to steal things inside our home in, inside our spiritual house and so i just love to uh to go into that but also to share and give you tools on how to remain delivered <laughs> um I've had so many inquiries. I think I've had over uh, over 200 inquiries already on people just needing prayers and this and that. And I feel it's important in the season. Um, the Lord is wanting to equip his saints, his children who are disciples to learn how to live a life of freedom in him because the freedom has already been purchased for us. But how do we live how do we access that freedom? And so basically, I'm merely going to share some tools that you can literally go and practice. And that if you do, do some of these tools um, and, and you go before the Father, He will help you and He will close those doors for you. Okay, so what did my journey look like? The first thing is if you're coming from a lifestyle of Ubungoma, or if you are once Ububoni Nyanga, or if you, 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 um, you've been a christian but you've also been dabbling in occultism and mixing things um you will also need to close some doors because even though you um uh, if if you have not repented those doors are highly likely still stealing from you in the background and you are most likely to see them in the next generation if you don't repent of them <laughs> you know um so yeah so the first question is why are people afflicted by ancestral spirits uh we need to understand that before that that before we are born our ancestors had a covenant with a lot of these spirits um some of us have heard of people about twilight um uh, or an ancestral altar that is there in the home our ancestors had agreements with these spirits and 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 the, the agreement is is always generational so now before you know it you are conceived in your mother's womb and you already have spirits 
with you in the womb and when you are born you are born with those spirits you don't realize that you are already covenanted into something that you have no idea of and so by the time that you grow up these spirits want to claim you because they have legal rights to claim you because your parents made a covenant with them for them to protect the family to bring riches to the family to do certain things for the family and our parents of course are foolishly not realizing that these are not ancestors these are spirits of the water marine kingdom spirit um these are demonic spirits of the mountains of different regions and territories and because these spirits are brilliant with resourcing faces it's what they do <laughs> let me tell you what it's what they do it's what they specialize in and if you don't believe me i'm sure you have heard uh, for some of us who are african that that's the, i'm sure you have heard some of our family members saying that no when you dream of a person doing something to you um it's not always that person sometimes another person can send that dream to you hiding as if it's that person doing something to you when it's not even that person so my question to us is that if me and witches can manipulate dreams can you imagine what satanists do what the devil does through dream life it's it's literally his playground in fact i'm not going to get into details but a lot of people are initiated in dream life first before they even initiated in the physical realm and this is why we dream of things because we've opened gates or our parents have opened these gates or had covenants with these spirits so they have direct access to speak to us and you know and and we believe we are hearing from grandma we are hearing from my grandfather who's passed and we we doing that instruction not not being aware of the spiritual intelligence behind that so i'm going to give you some tools um <clears throat> Um, I'm going to share some tools with you where you would be able to live in your freedom and to be able to take your stand. And um, and I'll be open and honest with you guys. And you're welcome to post some questions and I'll answer as best to my abilities. Um, so another anchoring thing is that resist the devil and he will flee. I believe you've shared that. And that if a man be in Christ, he's made new all things have passed away and God declares new things. So how do you clean your house? So if you have come from this background, how then do you clean your house? Because these spirits will wreak havoc. And just because you think Wutswasile and that just because you believe that you've been initiated and you think that they will leave your children alone, best believe they are coming for every generation it will be slaughter after slaughter blood after blood sacrifice and and if you if if you don't appease these spirits it, it results in accidents for some some job losses some baby losses some no marriage they they can wreak havoc if you don't know your authority but once you know who you are in christ jesus not only when you gain authority over these spirits but you close these portals and the most important thing is step one is to receive christ is to receive christ and be planted in a church and i cannot emphasize this enough because what happens is that receiving christ with your mouth confessing him that jesus christ lord i um lord forgive me for my sins i receive you as my lord and savior come into my heart come into my life lord um, um close doors to curses father i pray for your spirit to be in my life in my son's life my children's life my children's children's life lord come and do a new work inside of me i can't help myself only you can help me you need to confess out to receive christ and when you receive christ just ensure that you have witnesses just like a person who gets married needs to have witnesses witnessing the covenant you also need to bring witnesses that you are now receiving christ as your lord and savior that's the first step and um once you've received christ ask the holy spirit to lead you to a church if you're not yet planted to a church uh, but second step is be planted in a church, in a biblical church, in a church that believes in the whole Bible, not a church that believes in half of the Bible or a church that believes in certain portions of the Bible. Uh, plant yourself in a church that is not rooted in ancestral worship. And please be very careful with this because let me tell you what, uh, a lot of churches, you'd be amazed, just when I was being delivered and I was 
and 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 I was praying for a church, and I had to actively look for a church and ask the Lord to lead me to a church. It was a very very tough process because some churches, by God's grace, the Holy Spirit literally helped me and helped me to discern that I am not present in here, or that that same altar you just came out of, that altar is in this church. Because I've witnessed a lot of people who've been praying and who say, I've been praying, I've been in this church and I'm being more afflicted. I've got spiritual husbands because unfortunately, that's one of the signs and symptoms of being afflicted with these spirits is having spiritual husbands dreaming of something sleeping with you in the night, you know, uh, because the spirit is spirit is married to you. So it comes in the night and it wreaks havoc and does whatever it wants with you. And so you will find that a person will, will say that I still have spiritual husbands. I still, I, I, I'm still afflicted by ancestral worship only to find out that the church that they are planted in is in the church that is roots, that has an altar of divination right inside a church that practices in within those ancestral, that uses those ancestral spirits, but under the guise of Christianity. So how do you know that? what does such a church look like that is a false church uh, a lot of these churches you will find that they use a lot of water holy water and i'm going to be honest i'm coming from that background and i will just shoot and um some people will be offended because people often say this is my church i love my church but i'll be honest because deliverance is important souls need to be set free so any church that uses water holy water where the pastor is praying for the water giving you holy water for you to bath in and do a whole lot of things is 99.9% .9 highly likely rooted in divination. And a lot of these churches, you'll find that they say you need to canisela amanzi, where you need to throw coins, silver coins there, guacanisela. The reason why you need to throw coins in there is because the marine kingdom spirit, which is usually that mermaid spirit um, in there, the mermaid spirit needs money. <laughs> you know, but the Holy Spirit will not ask you to do such. You will not find that in the Bible. So any church that deals with this holy water where you have to take this water and use this water is usually dealing with marine kingdom spirits. And I will say to you 99.9% .9 of the time. I kid you not. Um, that's one of the signs. Um, another of the, um, another one of the signs is usually you'll find that the pastor is not, is he's half Bible, half into ancestors or even speaking well of ancestors or saying there's nothing wrong with that practice. Uh, coming from that practice and knowing what it took to be delivered, it's going to be impossible for you to be delivered while still being, being planted in such a church where you are coming under the covering of that spirit and uh it's impossible to not be demonically afflicted in fact there was once a church where the lord had to pull me out of at some point because the lord showed me that and it used to be a good church but the lord said that that's that altar of divination has been planted in there and the lord went on to say that a lot of people will be initiated as 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 izangoma in that church because of that altar and rightfully so same church people are being initiated as Izangoma and they don't even know why they're being initiated as Izangoma not knowing that that altar is there because those in authority in that church have given legal rights for the for demons to come into the church because they've placed that altar there and let me tell you once there's an altar present there best believe the altar is literally like a gate it's literally like building a house for demons for, for them to come in and afflict whomever is in that space. So before even going to a church, please pray for the right church. Another reason why people are demonically afflicted and not seeing deliverance is if they are living in a home where that altar is still there. So the, the uh, where that altar is still there of ancestral worship. This is why the Lord said to me, my first step after uh, receiving Christ and, 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 and declaring that I'm born again, uh, one of the first things the Lord asked me to do was to remove everything that is linked to, to that lifestyle, to Ubungoma. And I had to deliver my home now because now I had been practicing here and these demons have been coming in. We have been opening these portals through Impebo and everything. And they've been coming in and 
running the house now i needed to remove and burn everything but for me i threw everything away at that time the lord just said remove everything take everything away and i threw everything away at that time um another thing that i did as part of my deliverance i yes i have dreadlocks now but these are new dreadlocks i literally had dreadlocks that i'd had for six years they were very long uh that i had started because i had been planted in that lifestyle and and the reason why i had uh dreadlocks are not evil i have to say specifically dreadlocks are not evil but for me the foundations of my dreadlocks were caused because i was going into that lifestyle and i even had biles and ring and rings golden rings on my dreadlocks as a symbol of a covenant that i had with my ancestors so i believed at the time so um so it's for me i had to remove my hair the lord immediately after being baptized the lord said remove your hair the foundation from as i've explained the foundation of my hair at that time was from that lifestyle okay and another thing was um the my husband um at that time we had to cleanse our home i remember the lord asked me to fast for seven days i'm not saying that's what it's gonna look like for you but that's what the lord instructed me to do and he took me to hezekiah cleanses the temple in the bible i'm actually giving you the nuggets of what i write in the book the lost bride uh, for some of you that do not know that i ended up writing publishing a book on this and we are sold out the mandate the purpose for this is to not sell books but the purpose for this is to teach so that you use the principles of what i'm teaching to set you and your family for free you know um uh, free sorry <laughs> not for free you're not paying yeah <laughs> okay so um so um so yeah so the first leg of deliverance is removing anything because anything linking you there is literally like a portal that is coming into your house i don't care how much you spent on it it could have been two hundred thousand three hundred thousand remove everything and burn it sorry remove everything and burn it um and remember uh it's important for someone who's still new in the faith get a pastor if, if you planted in a church get a pastor to help you with the process where you can confess your sins to him and tell him i'm coming from this lifestyle and i'm wanting to come out can you please stand in agreement with me as i cleanse and remove everything can you please help me pray can you please help to anoint my home at that time for me the lord specifically spoke about me anointing my home because um at that time um uh, of which my husband had to do he was not even a believer at that time much but i said this is what's happening and um and and would it be possible for you to anoint our home and i don't know by god's grace he he joined me in prayer and he started anointing the home and i'm not saying that you're going to use anointing oil all the time but at that time the lord asked me to anoint the space and he took me to hezekiah cleanse, cleanses the temple the scripture where hezekiah was cleansing the temple from false gods and what hezekiah did was he removed all the false gods of uh, the, the false god worship um uh, the ornaments of the false gods or anything representing the false gods and then he literally took anointing oil and started um uh, and started wiping each and every on ornament new ornament in, in in the new temple that he was dedicating to the lord uh with anointing oil to cleanse from that past it's almost like baptizing your home just like you will need to be baptized your home will need to go through a process of deliverance itself and let me tell you what i've gone to homes where they're literally demonic portals where you can almost feel the dark entities in the home <laughs> because um maybe the previous owner have uh have had were had some altars there and you're coming in and you're living there and before you know it you're having strange dreams not knowing that there were certain altars that were open in that home that were not closed and were not taken out and not removed yeah that's okay another 
another thing is um sorry i know i might be all over the place with this i had planned for this but it's clearly going its own direction and that is okay so you call your pastor you confess your sins to him and then you need to actively renounce so renouncing is to divorce those spirits you came into agreement with. So what happens in a covenant, in a spiritual covenant where you covenant yourself to demonic spirit is that it's similar to a marriage. You are married to these spirits. That's why some of these spirits are, sp are called spiritual husbands and they, they have a right to sleep with you because you're still tied to them. There's a bond, there's a covenant in place. So you are to break that covenant with those spirits. You are to divorce those spirits, to renounce them. And, and something, the Holy Ghost um, taught me to, to, to literally call by name every altar, every tr traditional healer I ever went to, literally call them by name and every spirit, spirit connected to them. I, 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 I renounce you out of my life. I divorce you in my life. I break the spiritual contracts and agreements that I had with you. You call them by name. You would know where you went. And, um, and, and you call them by name and then, um, and then you do all uh, that, that whole process. And this is what the Lord showed me <laughs> that whole process. Um, you'll need help from a pastor with that process, uh, or, or friends who are prayer or a prayer group of people that you can confess things that can pray with you actively to cast out these things out of your home. And then after that, you, you have to be baptized. You have to be baptized. I, I cannot stress this enough, you know, and, 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 and it's, it's the book of John where Jesus says that a man cannot be born again. A man cannot enter, sorry, a man cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless he's born of the water and of the spirit. And a lot of churches are overlooking this baptism thing. And it is so important. It is <laughs> it's the most important ever you know um i would say 90 percent uh, a, a whole lot of my deliverance became complete when i was literally baptized in the kingdom when the old me was buried and then when i literally got lifted out of the water i i literally felt like a hundred kilograms was coming out of me and i felt new and and the person would need to be fully immersed in water. And I say this because I've seen some churches that sprinkle on the forehead. That's not going to do it. Uh, what will do it is a biblical baptism where your entire body has to be immersed in water. And let me tell you what, if Jesus Christ had to do that baptism, who are we to start reinventing the wheel and doing it our own in our own way you know when god clearly tells us how to do it according to the scripture and and there was a there was a moment where i mean there was in in the scripture john says to him that you know that you know john didn't feel good about baptizing him but jesus says that so that the law is fulfilled this has to happen you know um same thing with us as well so that uh so that we are born into the kingdom into the new kingdom because remember you're moving from another kingdom and water a water birth represents life just like a baby needs to pass through water to be born uh physically the same thing has to happen for us we need to pass through water and water represents the crossing of realms spiritual realms i'm not going to get into details where uh where we see with the children of is israel why they had to cross the water for the cleansing process where they had to move from egypt they had to cross the ocean it was part of their baptism where they were leaving one land as slaves and crossing over into new land as as to the promised land so the same applies to us and i love how the lord uses the old testament because everything he does he does it intentionally you know <laughs> and, and it everything always has a meaning and sometimes we take light which is very important and baptism is one of those things that that are just so important you have to do it in fact it's so uh, a person coming from this lifestyle i would literally say if you can do everything if if they are ready and they are telling you i'm coming uh, i'd love to confess i'd love to be born into the kingdom I, I would say if you can do everything within a week for them or three or three days for them, three to a days to a week for them, 
it will really help them because let me tell you what that's when the spiritual attacks intensify they intensify the most because the person is just waiting to be baptized yes i've renounced but i'm i still need to be born into the spirit born uh be born into the kingdom and um yeah like a lot of i've, I've been amazed at the level of deliverance that takes place once a person is baptized um yeah and and you know what ideally the whole confession thing even according to the scriptures i'm not going to get into acts on on why this method works but it's also biblical uh why it's important to confess and 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 to do this whole renouncing process before you being born it's similar to a woman being married you can't um uh, sorry it's similar to a person being married you can't marry someone whilst you're still married to other people so you you divorce those people then you enter into a new covenant into a marriage with christ and um yeah and then another thing is um yeah i think i've basically <laughs> i've covered most of it but the most important part is to remain free and let me tell you what once you are free the enemy you will uh, this is the advice for for people again that are going through this is that before you are baptized you will experience with intensity the spiritual attacks but once you have confessed your sins and you have renounced and and received christ and been baptized you will notice that it's almost like the spiritual attack will diminish like to almost nothing <laughs> so this is why baptism is so important but after being baptized there'll be another week where you will and I've seen this consistently with people that have, again, come from this life. There'll be another week where you feel, okay, the enemy is still testing you, you know. And, and then after a while, he will realize that he's got no authority over you because you're resisting him. Um, what I've also seen are people that are so afraid of the enemy coming for them and uh, or coming back or these spirits trying to come back and let me tell you what these spirits will try to come back it's not a case of if it's just a matter of when so it's important to plant yourself uh into a a church and start reading the word that is so the studying the word is the most important thing because as much as you are a new creation in the spirit your mind now needs to be renewed your mind needs to catch up with the new thing that god is doing and the bible will help you to understand who you are now your identity the bible will strengthen your faith and help you to resist the devil and i love it when the word says that resist the devil and he will flee the scripture says resist the devil and he will flee it doesn't say he might flee he will flee and if anything else i've been saved for seven years and i remain free and i have people even in my on my comment section who've been i had a lady who had been set free for 25 years and she's still free the the key is to be set free and live for jesus um is to be set free and live for jesus fully you will not you can't come out of that lifestyle and be lukewarm about your christianity you have to give your entire life to him you have to every decision you yield your life to him let god let the holy spirit guide you into everything you can't have your one foot in the world and one foot in in occultism or going back there and that is how you will remain free and let me tell you what once you are faithful you will see the faithfulness of god in such a mighty way in your family you will find that things that had been blocked for years blessings that had been locked kept away from you for years will begin to slowly unravel because whilst you were tied to that old covenant it's literally like you were in a curse or bondage where where the enemy was withholding so many good things that were rightfully yours so when you come into christ as a new creation what that which god had called to be yours your destiny your purpose immediately becomes restored to you it cannot not be restored to you just be faithful just trust god um and i would literally caution uh in the past i have delivered I, i've prayed for people and people have been delivered but it's not where god is calling me to be in the season i'm called to share the tools uh to share the tools with you because i am a mother i am a wife and in the season there's a lot we are doing in the marriage ministry and in evangelism so i'm not going to get into the deliverance because the deliverance <laughs> 
oh the deliverance i'll record another video another day on what delivering people actually looks like it literally means that you you if you're the deliverance person that's just what you do you don't do anything else because the backlash and the attacks that come are ones that will require you to not do anything else but just that you know and so my 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 um the commission that i've been given is to give you tools to how to remain free how to how to to be in a space where you understand how you can be delivered and set free through the holy ghost helping you through the your local church wherever you are planted in you know just gathering a few believers and friends and, and telling your pastor and asking for counsel and help and yeah so just stand and stand you know uh, the enemy will come for you and you call to stand and stand therefore. And when things get tough, you're called to stand. Um, yeah. And, um, uh, and, and another advice that I'd love to caution people is that once you start this process, I have to say this because it's so important. We're speaking about closing gates and how do you close gates? Do not live in sin. There's a difference between sinning where you daily mistakes or daily errors in behavior of which we all human and we subjected to versus living in sin. What do I mean by living in sin? Living in sin looks like you say, Lord, I'm giving my life to you. But another part of you is you are fornicating and fornicating is having sex outside of marriage. Let me tell you what, the most that I've been demonically afflicted is because of fornication. And if I were to, and this is not to condemn anyone, you know, I know we are humans and we are weak, but most people are demonically accessed through extramarital sex, meaning you're having sex with somebody who is not your spouse. And I've seen this, I've seen people that were completely delivered, set free from these ancestral spirits and were in the word and out of fornicating with someone who was a non, a non believer, the spirit of that person tied into their soul and their situation became worse. So this is not to scare you, but it's to make you wise to understand that you have to close your doors. That when you give your life to Jesus, you're giving your entire life, not portions of your life. It's you saying, I'm giving my entire life. Um, I also had another lady who said that, uh, who mentioned about needing help to come out of occultism, but she's still there. You can't help a person who's still there. You know, you, you can't help as much as you would love to, but that person has to come out themselves and step out and saying, I'm coming out of this. Just like when I came out, I didn't need to be convinced to come out. I said, Jesus, I'm done. Even if I die, I'm coming out of this. And I made that choice through faith. And let me tell you what, this is where you can never borrow people's faith. You know, uh, you can never come out because just because that person says, come out, you need to say, I am done. Just like a drug, a drug addict who's addicted to drugs, they need to take the stand and say, this is what I'm doing. This is my declaration. Then everybody else can, can help that person in support of coming out. But they have to walk that walk, you know, uh, th that walk cannot be walked for them and you can, and, and you can't ask somebody else to walk it for you. So when you say, Lord, please deliver me, but I'm still at the initiator's house, it's not going to work. You will need to come out. You will need to come out. And any person who will try and force you to come out will be demonically oppressed because those spirits have an agreement with you and until you break that agreement nobody else has authority over that agreement it has to come from you just like receiving christ has to come from you you know this is a walk that somebody else cannot walk for you so um with that being said it's been 45 minutes i knew this one would be a long one there was no way it could be a short one if you do have questions please add them to the comments below um thank you so much and um our next videos will be a bit shorter uh this one we had to go into 
uh, details with it. So if I can just pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I lift up my hands, Heavenly Father. I pray for every person listening to this, Lord, that, Lord, may they know that you are God who saves. That, Lord, you said in your word that every knee shall bow down and confess that you are Lord God. And, Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every family that may your blessing be upon them, your hand of covering be upon them, your hand cover them. That, Lord, may you bless them when they're coming in and going out, and may you give them the strength and faith to understand that you are a God who saves heavenly father that you are a God who restores heavenly father that they can trust in you that you don't need to be helped by anything else that you did it all and it is finished and it is done and through you they can receive full salvation and be set free and be delivered and be delivered and be kept free father I pray for the generations of people bound by ancestral worship heavenly father I pray for these generations heavenly father that we have been kept in cap, uh, that have been kept in bondage and in captivity where the enemy has withheld many things that are theirs because heavenly father they did not believe you they did not believe your word they did not believe the prophets heavenly father i come against the spirit of unbelief heavenly father may every person listening heavenly father to this to this recording, Heavenly Father, have an encounter with you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that may you open up many hearts, Heavenly Father, so that, Lord, they realize that you are such a loving, good, and faithful Father who wants good things for his children. Heavenly Father, I pray that may you bless everyone listening to this. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, may you help them. May you teach them the hidden things in the word, Heavenly Father, like you were able to teach me and even go beyond that, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you for this beautiful channel and I cover it and cover every family and every person in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I cover uh, their generations to come in the precious blood of Jesus Christ that every child, every one of their children shall know you and worship you as the God who is faithful. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Bless you, beloved. And I'm feeling such a strong presence of the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. My work is done. Cheers. <laughs>